Ford says this 400 horsepower 5 liter Coyote V8 in this F-150 can get 22 miles per gallon and today we're going to find out if they are telling the truth. Welcome back to the channel guys. Last week I mentioned that the 5 liter in the F-150s was my top engine choice in the 1500 segment and I mentioned fuel economy as a factor in that decision so I put my money where my mouth is and I drove that 5 liter about 100 kilometers down the highway to see if we could get the rated 22 miles per gallon out of that engine. I also talked about some mechanical reasoning as to why the 5 liter is or potentially is as fuel efficient as 22 miles per gallon and there are some critical factors that help that engine some things that I like, some things that I really dislike, and like I said, we'll get into it. Let's get down to the gas station, let's fill that five liter up with fuel and get on our fuel economy route. beautiful morning here in New Brunswick and well obviously we are gonna reference our fuel mileage on the truck side but before I took off um, I filled this this truck completely up with fuel um, so we'll actually do the math when I refill and get some real fuel economy so it'll be interesting to compare what the real fuel economy is to what the truck says we actually got currently we're sitting at 12.2 liters per hundred kilometers um, which is pretty decent I think we're gonna get much better than that but uh, only time will tell well we got our cruise control set to 110 and we are also in eco mode now realistically the manufacturers when they give your fuel economy or MPG ratings I believe it's at like 65 mile an hour so a little bit slower but the speed limit on this road right here is 110 or 70 miles an hour so that's what we're gonna drive and realistically I think that's much more much closer to what people are actually gonna drive on the highway the term cam phaser with the five liters with the EcoBoost has some um, negative uh, press with it because well they are known to be an issue and to fail in these engines but when they're working well cam phasers can actually really help to save fuel economy what cam phasers do is they can either advance or retard the engine timing um, and when you are not necessarily heavy on the throttle what this engine will do it will actually advance the timing or shift the camshaft that's what the cam phasers do so your timing gets advanced and the engine is a more fuel efficient engine now when you need that power and you're into the throttle a little more The cam phasers will shift again and they'll actually retard the, the engine timing, um, making the engine louder. And there's a definite change in tone when they do that helps to give you guys more power. So that different tone. So purely in terms of fuel economy, having cam phasers are not necessarily a bad thing. Another little trick this five liter has up its sleeve in terms of getting good fuel economy is cylinder deactivation now right off the bat i hate this um in 2021 ford introduced that into their five liters not by their own doing but because in order for this engine to meet government regulations um, ford's hand was kind of forced into putting cylinder deactivation into this engine we know what's happening with gm and their lifter failures as well as ram um, the MDS system potentially not um, helping the lifter situation there either. So I worry that uh, Ford will also kind of fall into that trap. Good news is, is that Ford has done their cylinder deactivation technology all in house. Apparently most manufacturers will actually outsource that technology um, where Ford actually designed and engineered their own system. So hopefully that gives them some better luck. The other thing why I absolutely hate this is because Ford's own chief engineer said that this system would help save one to two percent fuel economy. Let me let me repeat that one to two percent fuel economy and yes I know fuel is expensive these days and every drop matters but I mean one to two percent fuel economy 
and you're putting cylinder deactivation technology in this. This is a dual overhead cam, meaning there's four camshafts. Um, you know, it, it would have had to be in a rather complex situation, I would think, I'm not an engineer, but to save one to two percent in fuel economy just seems like a little bit of a joke to me. But on this run, we're looking for good fuel economy. Hopefully, that one to two extra percent of fuel economy with the cylinder deactivation technology in this engine is going to help us. Now, the third thing, and probably one of the most important reasons why this engine is so fuel efficient is, well, it comes down to the size. This is a five liter engine, five liter V8, and at the end of the day, that's a relatively small V8. Those bigger displacement V8s have to have so much more air into that displacement, and well, a gasoline engine needs a very specific fuel air mixture. It's 14.7 to one, also known as a stoichiometric measure or air ratio. With this five liter, it's not gonna suck as much air into the engine, which means we don't need to put as much fuel into the engine, um, which is gonna give us some pretty good fuel economy. Another reason for good fuel economy doesn't really have to do much with the engine, but is the drive line behind the engine. Now, some engines, you can only order certain drive lines, so I thought I'd talk about it because, well, it may impact which engine you decide to buy. And the drive line on this F-150 with the five liter comes with a 10 speed transmission, and this truck behind me has 331 gears. Now, 331 gears are highly advantageous for fuel economy. In my opinion, they are a fuel economy gear. Um, you can also get this with 355 gears or 373s. I would say both of those gears are a little bit more geared towards towing and power. So that is gonna really help us out having these 331 gears. Another thing, this 10 speed transmission, it is a triple overdrive transmission. I remember back in the day when a single overdrive transmission was kind of a big deal, but uh, yeah, triple overdrive. And when you are in 10th gear, you are at 0.63 to one, which is a heavy, heavy overdrive. At our speed today, 110 kilometers, roughly 70 mile an hour, um, this engine's running at 1500 RPM, barely turning over. So that's gonna really, really help fuel economy for sure in our run here. And I think people like to discuss whether or not a bigger, more powerful engine, not having to work as hard as a smaller, less powerful engine may lead to better fuel economy. I think in certain situations that could be the case, but uh, either way, hopefully that helps us on our fuel economy run. Currently we're sitting at 11, 0.2 liters per 100 kilometers. Again, we'll actually get the real math when we fill up and do some calculations, but uh, so far we're looking pretty good. All right, we made it to the gas station. Let's pump some fuel in this thing and see how much it actually used. Cause uh, we can't trust that computer on this truck for some real good fuel economy. There you go, 10.6 liters, not bad. Well, we didn't hit our 22 mile per gallon mark, but we did get pretty close, which I was very happy about. First of all, we were heading west, uh, which means we're going into the wind. Second of all, we were actually going up river. We were gaining elevation the whole way. Thirdly, if you've ever been to New Brunswick, we are kind of at the tip of the Appalachian mountain range. By no means are they mountains, but it is just up, down, up, down, up, down type of hilly terrain. Really not advantageous for fuel economy. So. 20.5 miles per gallon, I was very happy with. Well, I guess I just spilled the beans. So the calculated true fuel economy, we traveled 91.5 kilometers and we burn 10.6 liters of fuel. And that brings us to 20.5 miles per gallon or 11.5 liters per 100 kilometers. That is our true calculated value for that economy run. And I believe the computer said like 11.4, uh, 11.2 liters per 100 kilometers. So the truck was actually not that far off, which is nice to know that that computed value is more or less the true economy of the truck. Now I may do some more fuel economy runs. I'll find a flatter route, something more advantageous and we'll do a loop. So the wind and the elevation doesn't really play a factor in that. But if you guys like that, I think it's just another really cool way to compare engine to engine. Um, and, and once again, set different trucks apart from each other, which I like to do. So let me know what you think. Um, if you did like the video, don't forget to leave that thumbs up. And if you like cool stuff like this, don't forget to subscribe. We always have lots of cool stuff planned and uh, we'd love to have you on board. Anyways, enough of me. We'll see you in the next freaking video.